perfect night to take the boat out. The harvest moon rose above the lake to the gentle lapping of waves against the peeling wood of the old vessel. The fisherman waded into the shallows and loaded his eel nets and baskets into the boat. The hatchlings would bring quite a price at market. He imagined his sack filled with the supplies he would buy, tea, flour, salt, milk, maybe even enough for oats. Enough dreaming. With the boat loaded, oil skin and a dram of whiskey already stored in the bow, it was time to leave. He'd return by dawn, with the embers left in the hearth still warm enough to build the fire he'd need to thaw his numb fingers. He was old. Old enough to know the lake, to know her whispered stories and secrets. His father had fished here, and his father before him. He knew the eel's hatching place, past where the reeds grew tall on the far shore, away from the shadows of the forest, where you could see the sky clear, and breeze blew soft from the east at this time of year. The moon was high by the time he rounded the rocky outcrop. His shoulders and back worn with years of rowing, ached. But he was close now, close enough to unfurl the nets ready for casting into the deep. Ripples spread across the surface as the nets sunk below the moon's reflection, and he sat, drifting with the movement of the breeze. After a time, the fisherman tugged at the nets, Feeling the weight of the haul, he gradually heaved the load into the boat. Yes, he would eat well in the coming weeks. At last, arms burning with the strain of lifting, he came to the last of the nets. He pulled the soaked and tangled web aboard. And there, struggling amongst the weed and writhing eel, something caught his eye. Glistening white skin. And weed? Or hair? He cleared away the mess of the slippery catch, falling backwards in shock. Before him crouched a child, water dripping from its pale skin. How could this be, this far from shore? No person lived around this side of the lake. Travellers from the north sometimes passed, with strange clothes and talk he couldn't understand. But a child? Here? caught in his nets. He shifted closer. What are you doing? How did you get here? She, she, lifted her head and at once the fisherman realised his mistake. This was no child. A woman. A woman of such beauty it took his breath away. But no woman of this world This was a creature of the lake realm. He'd heard the tales of the old ones as a boy and thought them fanciful stories to busy the minds of children. Asarai, fairy folk of the lake, slow growing sprites who came to the surface on the night of the full moon to bathe in its soft light. The Asarai looked deep into the old man's eyes Her body trapped in the nets, she turned toward the water. She wanted to return to the lake. The fisherman moved forward to help her, then stopped. A creature like this 
would fetch a handsome price in town. The manor house had a water garden. Imagine the lords and ladies in their finery and what they'd give for a fairy woman to show at their midsummer ball. Or perhaps he would keep her for himself. Such a beautiful wife would make him the envy of the village. He would never have to fish for eels again. The fisherman shook his head, decided. The Asarai, realising her fate, looked desperately at the old man. She spoke, her words falling as the sound of waves blended into the night air. He could not understand her sounds, but he knew she was begging to be returned to her home. She reached out, grabbed his arm, but the fisherman shrank away. Her touch, icy cold, burned through his clothes to his skin. The fisherman closed his eyes, closed his ears to her mournful cries, closed his heart to her desperate pleas. He covered her with reeds and weed, turned and began the long row back home. When he reached the tiny village, the moon had set and the morning light was beginning to creep in the east. The Asarai had quietened a time ago and he thought to wake his prize. He'd carry her through the muddy streets and what a surprise the villagers would have. He chuckled, pleased with the thought as he pulled aside the reeds that covered her. But there, in the bottom of the boat, lay nothing but his nets and a few squirming eels amongst the weed. Nothing save a pool of water where she'd laid. Nothing. I've heard it told, after that day, the fisherman took to the lake night after night, seeking his water sprite. But the old man never saw her again. All he had was a tale to tell and the mark of the Asarai, a welt upon his arm that never warmed until the day he died.